Happy Monday, everybody. So this morning, this morning I was supposed to be up at six o'clock and I was up at six o'clock, but I was busy doing other things. Um, so my day kind of started a little bit late and all admittance here. As I was just a little bit busy spending some time with my guy and um, yeah, and just getting ready for the day and everything. So, hey, morning, Samelia's Katie. Morning, Eric. Bob. So this morning, I was, as I was kind of getting ready and everything and putting stuff together, I was listening to some different stuff as well. And the realization around enthusiasm kind of came up because I woke up this morning and the last two days especially, I woke up and there was just this excitement kind of in the energy, I guess you could say, of the morning. And it was one of those things where it was just this internal, just excited feeling for the day. And it got me thinking this morning as I was laying there, I was just like, you know, it just feels good to be awake today. It feels, I'm, I'm so excited about where this week is going, the next couple of weeks. Maybe it's because I'm off to Punta Cana, like next week, a week from today, I'm going to be on a plane heading out to the beach and everything. And it's definitely time to head to the beach, but maybe that's it. I don't know. Maybe it's just because there's this change of energy going on. I feel like the beginning half of this of 2019 has just been this a very almost draining, exhausting time of the year for so many people. And I know that I've definitely felt the pressures of that exhaustion kind of coming in and it feeling like there's 15,000 different directions to go and you don't quite know what to do with any of them. And it's just kind of that overwhelming feeling. And I know that a lot of my clients and friends and family as well, I've seen a lot of just the, the kind of like a wash through of the upheaval of last year kind of finishing out this year. And people just not quite knowing what see my hair right here is like sticking out all weird um <laughs> the problem with doing lives is that you can see like all of your flaws when you're doing them um but oh well just get over it right um <laughs> but, so yeah so but it what i feel with people and, and see with them is that it's just kind of like this wash through of of last year's energy and people are just still cleansing out purging out all the things that are not needed and that has been definitely a running theme for, for in my life, just that, that realization that there has been so much, we're going to use the word karmic debt here, although I'm not necessarily getting into like karmic debt in a spiritual sense, okay? So just, I'm just clarifying there. But it is kind of like the concept of you have all this karmic debt, this karmic weight from from all of this time before and for whatever reason right now is this time of releasing of purging of washing away and when we wash away and we clear out different things it brings up resistance because we get so comfortable bearing this weight so comfortable carrying around these old ways of being of doing of of you know calling in things or resisting things from coming in that we that we really want and when we move through this clearing cycle basically this washing of our energy to lighten our load that's that transformation right that's when we really kind of step into that energy a little bit more but at the same time there's fear so when fear comes in we also tend to doubt ourselves. We tend to really die, like just wait. We went and just teeter in. You know, it's like we tiptoe in. We get very cautious around the things that we want, around the things that we want to call in. And here's the funny thing: we're more comfortable with the feeling of not having. We're more comfortable with that concept of, oh my goodness, can it be? Is it possible? Putting doubt in there than we are with the feeling that initially rises up. And think about it: when you really want something, when you're really turned on something to something when you have this this like amazing idea or concept or idea th go through your head or just this desire what happens excitement enthusiasm you're like yes 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 I want that and it just makes you feel oh so good right and then what's the very next thing that happens you go oh, but 
I can't afford that. Or, oh, maybe when I, I, you know, I have little kids or, oh, I don't think my spouse will support that. Or I don't have the education for that. Or I don't have the time for that. Or that's a nice thought, but, and every time we hear that it's a nice thought, but I can't, I shouldn't, it's not possible. Here's my reasons why. Those objections that we put out there to prevent us from having what we want. They can be be great, great reasons, right? They can really be logically sound reasons as to why we cannot have that. But the God's honest truth on this matter is, is that that enthusiasm that you felt initially around that thing that you're really wanting, that you just like, yes, and it just turns you on and you just feel it all ignited right deep down to your soul level. That's there because that's what you're supposed to be having. It wants you as much as you want it. It's a calling in. And if you actually just slowed the fuck down and leaned into that enthusiasm and really let yourself feel it and process it, guess what would happen? You would manifest that shit to you really quick. That is the power of manifestation. You've got to tap into that enthusiastic feeling that yes, this is here. That as I call it, that fuck yes life. Well, fuck yes life means that you are a fuck yes to the things that you are doing, to the people that you are around, to the things that are coming into you. And if you are not, then don't do it. Don't be around that person. Don't say yes to it when you are actually a no. No matter what, if you are leaning in and you're saying yes to the things that you are actually resistance around, that you're actually a no around, that you're just like, that just does not turn me on. But I'm going to say yes anyway, because I don't want the confrontation. I don't want to hurt their feelings. I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to. All right. I don't want to for somebody else, for the fear of the outcome for, you know, trying to be the people pleaser, for trying to make everybody else happy, for being the doormat, the victim to your life, to your outcomes, to your circumstances, because that's what you're doing is you're creating a victim stance on things when you say yes, when you mean no, is never, ever, ever going to serve you the way you want it to. It's never going to bring you to that life that you really want. Leaning into the enthusiasm, leaning into that hell yes, leaning into that yes, I want that. This ignites my soul. This is pulling me. I feel really called to it. This excites me. This turns me on. This has me waking up in the morning or, or throughout the day thinking about it. That's the thing that you want to pursue. That's the thing that you want to lean toward. Somewhere in my house, I'm going to have to find it. I have this beautiful quote, and I don't quite know what, what the quote is, funny enough. But it basically is, is to follow the things that that really call to you. You know, if it, if it calls to your heart, if it turns you on, that that's the thing to pursue and to ignore all other things. And as I think, believe it's a Buddhist quote or, or something like that, maybe an ancient Chinese proverb. I have no idea. But it is very, very accurate in... And I always come back to Joseph Campbell. You're going to hear me say Joseph Campbell a lot because Joseph Campbell's teachings are all on the following of your bliss. And the following of your bliss is not a self-centered event it is selfish in the essence that you put yourself first, that you tap into self and that you get into that soul alignment and you go, what is really coming up inside of me? Am I a yes to this or am I a no to this? And just being very clear about your yeses and your nos and getting healthy boundaries around those yeses and those nos so that you can tap into them and that you can state them a lot clearer. And that is a learning ground that we all go through. We all process it and we consistently have to move through it again and again and again. We just access it at deeper levels or at higher levels, if you want to say that, because we move around it and we start to see things a little bit differently. We get a bigger picture of, of our life as we move through our life, right? So then we can go, oh, I can see where, where I didn't have healthy boundaries there. I can see where I had really healthy boundaries there. I can see where I became the doormat there because I was too caught up in people pleasing. I was too worried about confrontation. I was too worried about hurting other people's feelings, about not getting it right, about being too much or not enough. 
or some funky ass combination of that because that's what we typically do is that we feel that we're too much and at the same time we feel that we're not good enough crazy right but a lot of us have that little program going on and that is this wavering yesterday i talked a lot about the divine masculine to eric joseph campbell led me to and who's out there? Yes, yes, yes. And that's, yeah, that's a whole nother. Look in this section. It's good. That's a whole, whole nother topic right there. But yeah. Um, yesterday I was talking about the divine masculine and I was talking about how our masculine today really wavers back and forth a lot and that that wavering causes the inability to trust. There is no trustworthiness. You lose respect. You lose, you know, there's no leadership in wavering. There, are, Leadership and strength and courage and all these different things come from this ability to be clear and concise. And what we tend to do with for all of us, okay, men and women, no matter what energy we might be residing a little bit more in in this moment, masculine or feminine, I'm not talking about any particular person, us as human beings, we are, have grown in a society where we have lost ourselves. We have been told that it is more important to be the people pleaser than it is and to watch our words and to watch our actions and to watch our desires and to watch our goals and not to step on any toes because we do not want to offend, right? Think about it. And we're all so easily offended these days. I mean, if I showed up in the wrong color t-shirt on a live, I could offend somebody. If I say a certain word the wrong way, I could offend somebody. If I don't get the title of my live right, I can offend somebody. You know, it, it's constantly, this does not go against our community. This goes against our community standards. You were offensive in this way. Oh, all you did was show up today, but you were offensive. You smiled at somebody that was offensive. You you batted your eyes one too many times. That was offensive. Your shirt didn't have enough sleeve. It was too low cut. That was offensive. Now, you held a door open for somebody. That was offensive. What are you trying to do? Say that I'm weak? You know? We live in this world where it's gotten really stupid as to how easy it is to set somebody off, to get them to waver. And that is because we live in a lost society, the society where people are not tapped into their cores. They're not tapped into their soul. There is very little alignment going on. And those who do get into alignment have fantastic success. Just go out there and they make shit happen. And then everybody else sits back and says, how did they do that? What happened there? I wish I could. I just don't know how but that scares me. That's not comfortable. Oh, wow. How can they speak their mind like that? I wish I could speak my mind like that, but I'm scared to. As long as you're living in that scare, that fear, that, that control that your ego has you in over what if, you're never going to call in the life that you want. Tapping into the things that make you feel good. And here's the thing. I do hear a lot of people say, well, you know, I was down in, <clears throat> I was in Jamaica last year and had a, had a private driver, well, virtually a private driver because nobody showed up. So he made it, it made it where he was basically a private driver. Awesome guy. Awesome guy. Um, and I'm not just saying that because he was good looking and amazing dreadlocks and all that good stuff. And I had a great conversation with him, but he was all that too. Um, no, but our driver, I was telling, he was asking me about what I do and I was telling him about what I do and I explained it to him and he's like, whoa, you got to be careful down here in Jamaica telling anybody about living the fuck yes life because if you say fuck yes to them, they're going to think that they can, you know, like just like that living according to your bliss means that you can just go do whatever the heck you want at, at cost of anybody, right? And he's like, but I hear what you're saying that it's not about that. And I'm like, yeah, it's not because it's not about living no matter what to do no matter what, if it hurts somebody else, that's okay. No, it's that fuck yes life, that being a fuck yes and being in alignment to self and living like what Joseph Campbell teaches, living in your bliss and following your bliss. 
does not mean that you are causing harm or damage to any other being or the planet or doing anything that's illegal or, you know, not morally sound. Okay. Because at your soul, and I do believe this, that 99.9% .9 of the population, if they were tapped into their soul, would not even have a desire to harm others at all. That that, un, that being out of soul alignment is what causes that. That the ego has them, you can say, kind of by the balls is, is controlling, is the puppeteer to their life and is causing them to do this stuff because they don't know how to interact, react, be proactive, or act from that place of love that is actually coming from a total place of fear and lack of confidence and not knowing self. When we get into knowing self, there's not really a desire to harm or to hurt or to push past somebody else's boundaries. There's a deep compassion that rises up as well. A deep unconditional love, not judging, not criticizing, not trying to squish down, not trying to control another, but to actually just tap into who you are because what somebody else is doing is their business. It's not your business. It's not God's business. It's their business. Therefore, it does not really truly matter. Your business is all that matters. Your business is what is you are in control of. And if you maintain that thought right there of there's your business, there's God's business, there's my business, I'm only in control of my business. So this is what I'm going to focus in on. And guess what my business is? My business is about being proactive around my thoughts, around my feelings, and around my actions. Those are the things that I can control. Okay, those are the things that I can tap into that I can lean more into and I can expand on that I can choose not to think not to feel not to act like and if we each do that, I have somebody at my door and if we each do that, then that is really all that truly matters. So I guess I'm going to be getting off of here since I, I know who's coming to my house. Let me let them in. We're going to say hi to, and he does not know that he's going on Facebook Live. So this is Michael Smith, anybody who knows him. But we're going to just do this right now. Hey, say hi. You're on live. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> awesome. Who am I on live with? It's my Facebook Live. Oh, that's good cool. Good morning. All right. Yeah. All right. So he's going to get coffee. We had our debit cards mixed up yesterday. Yeah, that was a couple days ago. So, okay. I got your debit card right here. I did not spend thousands and thousands of dollars, although it was tempting to go buy a house or something. Yeah, they wouldn't let me even try that one, so uh, apparently I was using the wrong pen number. Yeah, I found that out too while trying to get gas. Yeah, I did too. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. All right, so if when we when we really line up to that bliss, to that soul alignment, there's not that desire to be wishy-washy and wave all over the place. There's not a desire to harm others. It is just about, it is literally just about being in that feel-good state within self. And to have that feel-good state within self can lead us to the next thing, to the next thing, next thing. And when we really tap into that feel-good, into that soul alignment, guess what? That enthusiasm that I was talking about is exactly what will lead us to that next thing that feels very in alignment to us. And when we just follow one, one good feeling to the next good feeling to the next, guess what? Our life becomes easy. It becomes effortless, you could say. Although we're putting a lot of effort into being proactive around our thoughts, our feelings, and our actions, staying out of other people's business, staying out of God's business, and only aligning to our own, that's where the true effort comes in. And it can be very uncomfortable to do that on the front side. But in doing that, we gain this whole beautiful field of ease, of creation, of flow, and excitement or enthusiasm and that's really what I want you guys to focus in on today is to ask yourself does this feel good whose business is this those two things does this feel good and whose business is this because if it's somebody else's business get the fuck out of it if it's your business stay in it go deeper and ask yourself does this truly feel good what is my you know what is my reason for wanting to say do or have this does this feel in alignment to my core my soul or is this coming from my ego from something else that is coming from a place of scarcity a place of fear a place of judgment a place of you know that is not really in alignment to the soul 
and just see what kind of comes up for you. And I can tell you that the more you tap into that enthusiasm, the more beautiful manifestations definitely come into your world. Okay, so I'm going to jump off of here, have a conversation with a dear friend, and um, who just put Lorelei on the spot there. <laughs> hey, Lorelei, I'm not being on the spot. <laughs> Touch base with him and stuff. Um, quick announcements. Next week, Addison Bell and I are headed off to Punta Cana for our annual girls trip. We will be teaching a three-day workshop for entrepreneurs there um, called Monetizing Badass Bosses. Day one, we are going to be focusing in on passion. Day two, we're going to be focusing in on play. I might have those backwards. I keep, I keep mixing those all up. And But day three, we're going to be focusing in on profits. So we're going to be talking about how passions and profits can lead us to profits in all areas of our life. Yes, that's cash flow, but that's also in our love, in our health, in just our beautiful manifestations because we profit in so many different things. It's all about having an abundant life in all ways and having just that joy, that bliss come to us and really truly monetizing all of the things that come in, in our passion and our profit so that we can, I mean, in our passion and our play so that we can create those profits. So make sure that you click on the link in the comments section to go explore that workshop, sign up for it. It is a global workshop. It is available to anybody in the world because we are teaching it here on Facebook Live to you. And until the 20th of this month, we are giving away an additional free home study course. I taught, like I was just telling you, I was in Jamaica last year. Well, while I was in Jamaica, I taught a three-day online workshop called Ass in the Sand, teaching you how to take your on take take your entrepreneurship from zero to a hundred thousand dollars and I am giving away that workshop to anybody who signs up before the 20th of this month. So make sure that you grab that because you get two powerful workshops for the price of one right now. It's going to be absolutely amazing. I'm very, very excited to bring this workshop to you from the beaches of Punta Cana um, next week. So make sure that you are in there because guess what? Live training is always the best training, right? Get those questions met, get everything brought up to the table and let's work through that. Let's get access the passion, access the play and really create that blissful life. As always, stop existing, start living, and you can follow me at www.kendallwilliams.com. And I will see you guys tomorrow with another Conscious Coffee. Bye, everybody.